The previous two videos defined parametric curves and developed the idea of alternative parameterizations. The same shape has different rates of movement along it. Since there are rates of movement, the idea of a derivative seems very natural. How is the speed of a parametric curve measured? A curve, say in R3, though the definitions are fully general, has three component functions, x of t, y of t, and z of t. Each of these are individual single variable functions of the independent variable t. If they are differentiable, and I'll assume they are, I can take derivatives. The result is a vector of three derivatives, x prime, y prime, and z prime. What is this vector? What is this derivative? This is the tangent vector to the parametric curve. Instead of slopes of a tangent line, parametric curves have tangent vectors. It is a local direction vector that points in the direction of movement, and its length, as a vector, measures how quickly the parametric curve is moving. All this is necessary since movement in space, space has both direction and speed. The derivative needs to capture all of that information. A vector, the tangent vector, does the trick. Let's see this in an example. Here is the logarithmic spiral, parameterized so that it goes through the point 0, 1 when t equals 0. At that point, the tangent vector is 1, 1 quarter, and this is a local direction vector that shows the movement. This is pretty close to a tangent line from single variable calculus. If I draw the tangent line, it does line up with this vector perfectly. But the vector is better than just a slope. A local direction is more useful. Let me go back to the four parameterizations of a portion of the parabola that I used in the previous video. Here they are on the left. t, t squared, t to the 4, root t, root t, t, and then 5t, 25t squared. All of them traced the parabola. They all went through, for example, the point 1, 1. The first three did so at t equals 1, and the last one at t equals 1 fifth. Therefore, I can calculate the tangent vectors. I differentiate both components of all four. I'm not going to show the details of most derivatives in this course. I've done most either by hand, off the page when they are simple, or by computer when they are difficult. Here are those derivatives. 1, 2t for the first, 2t, 4t cubed, 1 half root t, 1, and 5, 50t. Then I can evaluate at t equals 3 for the first three and t equals 1 fifth at the last to get the tangents at 1, 1. Again, I need the different parameters because I want the same point, not necessarily the same time for the different rates of movement. Here are the results, four tangent vectors. Let me graph these for you. All four tangent vectors point in precisely the same direction. That makes sense, since that direction is the tangent direction to the curve at the point 1, 1. However, the four tangent vectors have different lengths. This captures the fact that the parametric curve moves to the point 1, 1 at different rates depending on the parameterization. Sometimes, it is useful to only consider the direction of the tangent, not its length. This is used to get a sense of the direction of the shape without a sense of movement through it. To this end, I can define the unit tangent vector. A unit vector, recall, is a vector of length 1. To make any vector into a unit vector while preserving the direction, I can divide, with scalar multiplication by a reciprocal, by the length of the vector. For example, in the previous discussion, the tangent of the first parameterization was 1, 1, was 1, 2. Length of this vector is root 5. Dividing by root 5, the unit tangent is 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. This points in the same direction, but this is the unique vector of length 1 that points in the tangent direction. 